Welcome to the vlog. Out fishing again. So, start of a new chapter. I'm on a little pit which is just outside of Crewe. Leighton. I think it's called Leighton Pit. It has had former names but it's been taken over by a new company and I'll put the link down below for who it is. SMM Fisheries. That's the name of the people. So, what's in this place? Well, there's a few carp to be honest. There's some uh, commons around about the £20 mark. It's about an acre in size. You've got a place down there which is called Carp Corner. Wonder why. And it used to be something military. We're not entirely sure what it used to be, but in the field over my right hand shoulder over there there's a line of bomb craters there's an actual string of bomb craters as it's come from a, a german plane not a british one you don't know you don't know but it's come from a german plane and it's hit this place this place must have been a military building because there's concrete strewn everywhere and the bottom of the lake most of the lake is absolutely flat like there's a concrete bottom i'm not sure i've not been down there so i can't actually I'm guessing, to be honest, I'm guessing. And I th we think that was a road into it. If there's anybody got any information on this, it's in Leighton, then please drop a comment below. Debs is with us. She has a bit of an accident with one of the rods when we were packing away down there. So she's actually using my uh, marker rod, which is fine. And I'll have to sort rods out for soon. <laughs> Not sure when, but I'll sort them out. And we're fishing over. Amino crab and some redfish bait, which is my own bait that you can get off the website, which is uh, the link below the official website. I'm fishing on a Ronnie rig on a pop up, and we're fishing bottom baits as well. We're switching it around a little bit. That side of the lake's about five foot into the centre where I think there was a, the explosion was. Um, 14 foot and this bank here where my rods are I've got three rods out for a change as well just down there we think that was an old wall or part of the building because it's uh it's, it just drops off like a big shelf right across there but it's a lovely quiet lake and you can actually book it i'll put the link for the website down below right so they've come up with the name Leighton pit because it's in the area of Leighton, so why not call it Leighton Pit? It makes it easier for you to find it, and it's right at the side of Leighton Hospital. And there's a fish just jumped there as well. There's quite a few carp in it. They're mainly in the up, upper layer, so at some point tomorrow morning, I think I'll go on some zigs. That'll be a big call, really. I think I'll do that. What a beautiful little pit in a beautiful part of England. Right. Never mind all the waffle. Let's get a bit of a time lapse on the ghost standard thing and try and catch a fish. Now I'm no expert, but when you look at the flight pattern of where these bombs have gone, you've got one set of bombs landing in a line going straight towards the bunker or building and another set running across there. Both running in tandem side by side and I'd like to also know whether or not that was two planes or one plane because I'm just amazed at that. that those, this kind of thing really amazes me because just going one, two, three, four in the field past the hedge, 
and you've got one, two, three, four, five. And it looks like the fourth shell, big shell, or possibly two, has created the pit. Forgive me, just, just things like this blow me away. I know it's silly and all that, but Second World War. I mean, the reason, I'll tell you what actually happened is, for me to start getting interested in things like this is when I was in France fishing, uh, and it was near Benny Riviera, and near where the armistice was signed between the First and Second World War. And when I actually went to see the battle sites and everything when I went fishing, um, it all got kicked off because of the fishing. And when I went to see the, uh, the battle sites, it blew me away, all the different things that went on, because I'm of a generation that missed this kind of thing. I kind of sat in the middle between this, the Second World War and current wars that have gone on recently. And how did that happen? How did I get interested? Well, when I was fishing the river there, I didn't realise, but all the way around me, I was fishing an area called the Red Zone. You wasn't meant to fish it, and I was not aware. I was oblivious to the fact that this was uh, an area where there was still ordnance and still munitions in the ground and I'm putting bank sticks in and stuff like that and then when I come to read the actual signs I realised very quickly I shouldn't have been there and that's why some of the interest for me um, in military and the things that happened in the first and second world war which is just part of what I, I do separately away from this is uh, he just he just switches the light on so when Sean said to me he says oh yeah I've got this pit I went Sean is this pit bomb craters went, yeah how did you know I went amazing I need to come down and have a look at this because I just need to but yeah one two three bang could you imagine a being here seeing the bombs go off from the planes the rumbling of the German fighter planes coming over your head and smashing into the ground with the bombs big bombs at that I just love that I just love that well, I know that was a bit self-indulgent, me having a look at that, but pff, the whole purpose of this video is to come down and have a look at this water. And I like the look of it, it's nice looking water. There's a little bit of history behind it, and I'm going to find out a bit more about that, maybe put it in another video, exactly what happened. But, with it being the middle of summer now, it's the uh, first week in August, and it's actually swelteringly hot now. Last night, I didn't get very much sleep because it was warm. It's like a mill pond, no fish were moving. Um, nothing was taking baits off the top, it just wasn't happening and that's just fishing sometimes. This is a real life video and that's what the real life videos do. And listen again, if you can find any information about some of the raids that happened over crew, Rolls Royce, things like that, Liverpool, Manchester, during World War II and the bombings, let us know because <clears throat> this kind of stuff is our history and I kind of enjoyed that kind of thing and I also enjoy my fishing but I know it's a bit indulgent of me talking about this kind of thing while I'm doing a fishing video. Um, tough. So just over that tree there, facing in that direction, is the Bentley factory. Less than a mile away. So it's clearly obvious this little nest here, I'll say obvious, comment below, it might have been, it might not have been. It's presumption. We all know what presumption equals, don't we? It's like Chinese whispers. But it looks like this was a nest, anti-aircraft nest, to try and bring down any planes flying over Bentley, which also, like we say, just built the Merlin engine in that direction there. So it's lined up symmetrically perfect to face the Bentley factory. So taking anything out over the air, that's amazing. And also the bomb craters are in perfect line to the Bentley factory from this nest. But in the meanwhile, it's got some nice carp in it and some mixed course fish in it. So for me, that's a double whammy. I absolutely truly love these kind of things and phew, amazing. Just a little story for the vlog, which means absolutely nothing whatsoever to a lot of people. You may comment below and go, what's that got to do with fishing? Well, it's history and that's why this pond's here because without that happening, this little pond wouldn't be here. And I wouldn't be here either fishing it. Truly amazing, that. Day two. Sadly, the first time we come fishing this water, 
I was more interested in the actual World War footage of the raids from 1940 of German bombers that was trying to bomb crew for the Merlin engines and there was tanks at the, uh, the locomotive sheds that were being built as well so they had good reasons to try and bomb crew hence why the craters were all there but after a quick visit back to this lake now with the rods out we're still struggling to pick a fish up but Debs has been fishing with a roach pole and she's had loads of roach and perch just fishing just in the side right down here and when we looked at the GPS the last time we've looked again now there's literally loads and loads and loads of silvers and roach so if you're, if you're float fishing that kind of thing phenomenal phenomenal sport if you look at the footage now right here you can see how many fish are in this place carp having speaking with sean the owner he's turned around and said there's about 30 fish that he's counted they don't know and apparently it used to be owned by a, a fishing club this many years ago called crew pioneers they're no longer in existence but the pond still is the uh, the pit still is but for reasons we can't guess uh, we're still not picking a fish up I've even resorted to little 10 mil baits in a PVA bag cast into the middle just there trying to pick a fish up. Down that part of the lake down there is no car oh, it's carp corner. I have seen fish there myself but what's the most interesting thing I've seen on this lake so far is some very big tench rolling in the centre in about 14 foot of water coming up like little dolphins coming up in the water. So just because we haven't had a carp so far, I'm going to carry on with this vlog as time goes by because I'm enjoying fishing, it's a lovely little lake, but you have got a book on and I'll put the link down below, the telephone number, you've got a phone to book to fish this water. So don't forget, it's going to be called Leighton Pit, after the hospital. The hospital is just there, so it's right next door to the hospital, so if you're struggling to find it when you want to get down here to fish it, you've got to... Uh, Look for the hospital first, and if you look on Google Maps, you will find the lake. But it's lovely, it's a lovely little fishery. Now, like you say, you can squeeze on six people, and you've got to show a bit of decorum. Luckily enough, we've had nobody fishing the lake while we've been here, so we could have cast anywhere we wanted to. And the more people that fish it, the less rods you're going to use, because it's going to be a bit compact if everybody's fishing with three rods we've got three rods out Debs has got two rods out that's Debs is there <sighs> so in this vlog if we don't catch a fish in this vlog then I'm gonna come back and take some time and try and catch some fish out of here because I'm really 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 enjoy fishing it but now it is about the fishing now but again, comment below, if you've got any family members and know about what happened in World War II, in crew, put the comments below, I'd like to know a little bit more in depth. I know that they built these bunkers, and this is the, this is, this is clearly a bunker now, I've done some research, or a communications bunker. If you know more about these kind of bunkers around crew, again, comment below, I'd like to know more about them. Because it's really interesting so this is what it is it's now a lake well would you class it as lake debs um, I call it a lake. debs will call it a lake mm, she's currently going for roach with a bit of bread <laughs> so there we have it right Let's see if we can catch a fish. I, I'll, I'll, I'll explain something else. Over the last few weeks, there's been high pressure and it's been a right toil to try and get some fish feeding because of low oxygen levels and it's just been tough. It's just been tough.
well we're off the mark we've got a nice little common very dark in color and this isn't a runs water when you first come here you think yes it's a runs water it's quite small there's fish on the top you can see fish moving but i can tell you now it's not runs water you've got to work for your bait oh you've got to work for your fish you've got to put the effort in see where they are when you find where they are you've got a chance of catching them and it's not hard to find them but what i have found is keep on the fish meals that kind of thing keep away from um anything that's my point of view this is keep away from anything that's like kind of fruit based that kind of thing do the fish meals and don't put a lot of bait in as soon as you put a lot of bait in there it can actually change things do you know what i mean it can change things a little bit there we go nice little common not too big very dark in color and definitely worth a little trip right let's see if we can catch any more now so just keep it small small amounts of bait because the larger amounts of bait um pushes them off a little bit so just a little tip there there we go lovely isn't it it's not all about the size of the fish it's more the journey let's be perfectly honest right let's put this back Now let me explain about the rig that I've been using and the little approach on this. When I used the actual deeper I found like there was a, an area that came in which is very flat and no weed, nothing, it's just a flat bottom, very hard and that was a really nice place to put some baits down. Not many, about eight or nine and then fishing with a drop off lead rig tubing, khaki rig tubing matching the actual colour of the soil fluorocarbon just a little boom sections, kick it away and then a very very soft basic hair rig combi rig, just like that there okay and that's a bo bottom bait, that's the amino crab bottom bait with about a centimetre from looks like a I can't remember what that is. Which hook is it? Hmm. Oh, I know where it is. It's one of those um, ace hooks that was given to me by somebody who watched one of the videos. So that's that. Fishing semi slack with a little back lead, like so. Just, just off the end of the rod tips, not that far out. But keep the amount of bait going in around your hook baits to the minimal. Don't go over the top. I mean, the first night I did on here, I put too much bait in and I think it spooked him. 